following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the July 19th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Now is just fine, 877-927-6648. If you can't pick up the phone to call, you most certainly can send me an email at steve at tfnn.com. Just inside that subject heading, please put radio show questions, something along those lines. That'll make it easier for me to pick out amongst all of the emails that I get. And, of course, inside the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. Vasily. Of course, you know what movie that comes from. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trade up 26 points. She's trading out at 21,601. S&P is up 10 points, trading at 2470. NDX 100 up 40 points. That's nearly 7 tenths of a percent of the upside. Russell 2000 up almost 8 tenths. Semis up 3 quarters of a percent. Um, does that sound like a bear market to you? Of course, it does not. These are the leaders that are out there. They're going to continue to lead things to the upside. We've got gold flat. Silver is flat as well. They're trading at 1242 and 1630, respectively. Lightspeed crude is trying to break out. It's trading at 4715. I don't recall the number. I think it's 4714 uh, that you need to see a close above. And one penny does not blow our skirt up out there. But if we do see a higher close... And we'll look at it during the uh, during the hour here with regard to what is the level that the uh, light sweet crew needs to bust out of uh, because you and I know the correlation. If that can break out, well, then you'll see a breakout party inside the energy sector. The XLE, that's up 64 pennies. That's trading at 65, 65. Lead the chart here dollar-wise, individual stock-wise. The upside is Vertex. Pharmaceuticals up nearly 21%, 27 bucks and change. Price line up about 20. Intuitive Surgical up about 10. Scripps Network's up 980. Ultimate Software Group up 8. Google's up 8. To the downside, it is GWW Granger Worldwide down 13 bucks or 7.5%. Northern Trust down 9%. Nearly nine bucks. IBM off seven. McCormick and Company down uh, five bucks. Uh, m and Bank down four. United Continental off four. But, of course, I want to look at what you want to look at out there. Let's change things up just a tad um, until I get – I don't have any emails. At least I didn't have any before we went on the air. I don't see any requests inside the Tiger's Den. So let's uh, change things up just a tad. Let's just simply go look at uh, – you know what? Let's do this. I was going to just go straight to the indices. But let's go take a look at what's going on inside the sectors inside the S&P 500. Why don't we do that? That excellent idea out here. And that way, that way we'll get a better picture, perhaps, of what the S&P 500 is doing. So let's start with numero uno, the number one weighted in sector inside the S&P, and that is technology. Now, as we take a look at uh, this sector here, uh, what you're going to see is that uh, this is taking on its highs out here. Nice big old bearish engulfing candle. That occurred back here. Mm, see if I can give you the date. That was on the day. Uh, it looks like June 12th, the 11th, 9th or 12th. It must have been the 12th. Yeah, it was the 12th. Uh, when uh, there was a, I forget the name of the hedge fund. Big hedge fund. 
um, eight billion dollars worth of redemptions that they needed, and uh, that was when uh, we saw the trading desk uh, just simply because of on the intraday charts the linear move that was going. Viking, thank you, Z. Yeah, Viking needed to redeem. So now look, when you and I were chartists, years from now we're not going to remember. I might remember. But we probably won't remember what happened on this specific day out there. So this is sort of, it's not fair, right, that that, uh, that we know what actually occurred creating that big old bearish engulfing candle. But in this case here, that really is resistance or should be resistance. I kind of minimize that resistance knowing that there was a forced liquidation that was going on inside of the market. Now, if the XLK takes that level out, and I doubt that it's going to do it on volume. We're in summer trading here, and that was a forced liquidation day. You're going to see an A to B equals CD to the upside that's going to form, and that'll take you to a much higher price out here. You can see just simply how strong this move has been off of the bottom from back here in early July, July the 7th out here. But there is nothing bearish about this stock chart, the XLK, other than getting back to a potential level of resistance. We'll call resistance as we speak right now. It would not be fair for me to just simply say, well, it was, you know, then I would have to pick out all of the other days, right, with regard to events that might have occurred out there. And then we'd be introducing other crazy fundamental stuff into our technical fundamental charting. But uh, inside the XLK, there's not anything that looks bearish here. Now, volume-wise, if we go take a look at that on this uh, chart here for the XLK, you know, no way. No way is it going to deal with the volume that we saw coming off of that move. Now, this was also happened to be, by the way, a day where price was pushing higher with volume as well because it got above the prior day's high. So 35 million shares. You're at 3 million shares today. Nonetheless, it closed about 57.62. You're at 57.46 right now. Old resistance. And this is where you can use it, should become new support. So the XLK looks pretty hunky-dory. If we take a look at the healthcare sector, XLV out here, uh, it's also back to trying to take out its highs. Now, that was just a normal seventh wave move that created that top out there. That's the letter G. That's the market singing in the key of G. And if we see a price move up 8070, that's the top of its uh, Taz daily profile out there. That will turn into a very nice bullish message. That is the second waiting, I believe, two or three inside of the S and P 500. The XLF is probably the weakest of the um, of the uh, sectors inside the S&P 500. Uh, weakest from the standpoint, still trading below Stevie's red line. Hasn't broke a level of support. That support would be at 2439, the bottom of its Taz daily profile out here. Um, but nonetheless, there's nothing that really looks awesome. There's nothing that really looks horrible out here. It's just more of the sideways-ish type move. But the markets can certainly move higher without the financial sector. My goodness, they most certainly have done that for a long period of time. If we take a look at the XLY, the XLY, that is the consumer discretionary sector out here. Uh, volume behind the move so far today, 1.2 million shares. It's just trying to get all the way back up to make that 100% move of a move, get back up to that seventh wave. Now, how important are those seventh waves? You can see that the top was formed out here back in the early part of June, and the bottom in July formed with that seventh wave move. You're only in wave number two. This has got much higher to run. That is the discretionary sector. We haven't looked at all 10 or so, but they look pretty good to me. Steve Roach with TFNN. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. David White has just announced a new online course that he'll be premiering to his subscribers the evening of July 26th, the next wild, wild west of computing. Machine learning will be the biggest growth area for tech companies in the next 10 years. Make sure you're ready to capitalize on that opportunity. With over 50 types of algorithms and growing, Dave White will tell you why there are so many areas for companies to apply this to their business to both sell and consume. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to either of Dave's newsletters, Path of Least Resistance and the Technology Insider, as well as get a 30-day money-back guarantee when ordering Timing the Trade charts. Don't miss out on the next Wild Wild West of Computing as it premieres July 26th for all subscribers to Dave White Services. For all the details and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we were we're taking a look at the different sectors inside the S&P 500 and looking for any kind of signals here so far, with the exception of a sideways type move inside the financial sector, XLF. Everything looks good. XLY, by the way, if I wasn't clear, uh, it's going to head back to its highs, may take out its highs. Um, and that's where uh, she's headed. But it looks pretty healthy as we speak right now. Rising price oscillator above zero. As long as price stays above 90.12, uh, things look uh, really nice. That's the XLY. Uh, XLI, that's the industrial industrial sector here for the S&P 500, um, uh, kind of neutral. It's, it's not bearish. That is most certain. Uh, it is not uh, bearish out here. More of a neutral type of a stance. Now, it gets uh, beyond neutral if it closes above 69.26 out here, but uh, not a lot to say about the in, nothing bad, but nothing really great uh, to, uh, to, to write home about inside the XLI. Let's go take a look at uh, consumer staples. That would be the XLP out here. Now, the XLP, a uh, nice bottom that it formed that seventh wave move that it formed out here and that's why you and I we do that we do that wave counting thank you Basil Chapman out here and that was looks like 711 of course my days can be off for some reason on this chart out here but you'll see that at the bottom that happens to be wave number seven out here um, uh, things picked up a couple of days ago when price closed above Stevie's red line that suggests a move to 5508 you clear that and then you're into the 55. 50 type area as the next area of resistance but this looks like this has turned the corner that is the xlp now what you can do for each of these sectors is go and take a look at the weighting structure inside there maybe instead of play the entire sector you go play some of the top weighted names depending on the uh, chart pattern that is present the energy sector we talked about that earlier and how now the energy sector, as it was moving lower uh, several days ago, I'll give you the approximate date. It looks like it was around July the 10th out there. Formed a nice little bottom, that nice little hammer candle. Nice bullish reversal signal with price moving lower, doing less route of weakness. Now, you know how that has become your ultimate favorite 
pattern to pay attention to when we take a look at technical analysis, both at bottoms and at highs out there. And you, you know just how important it is to watch for the cavalry to arrive. You don't need to stick your neck out. You just need to watch for the bullish or the bearish reversal candle to form. Well, a hammer is a beauty out here. And you can see how prices continue to move up. Now, what the price oscillator hasn't done, bottom panel has not broken above zero. This could be still a counter trend rally that is underway. It needs to take out this high here from what looks like about July 3rd. Taking out that high would be uh, nice. But at this stage here, it says at least more counter trend rally should be underway. Now, if that is going to occur, then uh, light sweet crude doesn't have to, but it will work best if light sweet crude also is breaking out. Now, as we take a look at our market profiles, 60, 240, daily and weekly, those are the four different time frame charts that you're looking at. You see those green shoots so to speak, on the 60-minute, on the 240. That's just telling us that price is above the uh, profile high for that specific time frame. And you will notice on the daily chart, it has turned to mean and green as we speak. Now, it'll stay mean and green as long as price closes above 47.14. You're two pennies above it right now. Do those two pennies matter? Absolutely. They most certainly matter. In fact, they matter more on this profile than many other profiles. Why is that? Well, what we first need to do is just simply turn off the price data. And you're going to say, blasphemy, how can you turn off the price data and then be able to interpret the chart? Well, and although this one, it is a little bit more difficult to see, there is a brand new profile that formed this morning. And the center of that box at 46.16, much closer to the top at 47.14, than to the bottom. This tells us that this is a bearish structure. So for light, sweet, crude to close above a bearish structure, that means above the high, that says it is taking out a significant level of resistance. That would be sending a very important message to you, to me, and really all of the other traders that are out there, whether they know it or not. So watch that uh, 4714 level, and you got to give it some room out here. You know, closing above it by just a couple of pennies, it's important. But uh, then what you really need to see is you need to see some follow through on the next session out here. Now, if that's what's going on inside of Light Sweet Crude, let me change over to another set of charts out here. Let's go take a look at one of our other Stevie charts. Uh, oh, shoot. I actually had it on. What the, what, the, what the heck was I thinking? What was I smoking earlier? Uh, nothing. But let's go pull up the uh, Light Sweet Crude contract out here. There we go. Here, here's the September chart. This is what we were looking for. Now, you hear on Light Sweet Crude, much like on the XLE, you know, you can see how similar how exactly similar these patterns are. In fact, there was a bear sash candle inside the XLE that identified a level of resistance. You can see that here inside of the September contract for uh, light sweet crude. So it really needs to break above that July. I'm going to guess that's July 3rd. Let's not guess. Well, let's sort of guess. It looks like yeah, July 5th maybe is the uh, candle session and right around 47.50. Uh, so whatever the high of that session is, we're going to go with 47.50, is the level that Light Sweet Crew would need to close above. And if it does that, then what you actually have is negative B equals CDT upside. In fact, you have a potential Gartley sell pattern that would be unfolded. We don't know if it will turn into one. That would give you a price projection of 49.10, and that should put some nice energy into the energy sector. So uh, that's taking it uh, one step at a time. Now let's continue and go back and finish off these S&P 500. But what you and I are noticing here, right? We're noticing sector by sector, just simply go bullish, bearish, or neutral. Have you found anything that's bearish on any of those sectors? No. You've seen a little neutral, but and you've seen bullish, but you haven't seen anything that gives us the bearish signal. Now how about the utility sector, the XLU out here? This is turned to neutral to bullish. We say that because price closed above Stevie's red line. It, too, formed a hammer bottom, much like the XLE did. This was not moving lower, less relative energy. Nonetheless, a hammer candle uh, into a level of support. In this case here was a Tom DeMarc uh, support trend line, that dashed line that was out there. That's a level of, of uh, support and resistance that you and I look for. So, yeah, this completed a pattern with a hammer candle. And now price is actually closing above or looks like it's going to close up. It's a daily market profile out here. It's really right on the number as we speak right now, but 
as we speak right now, this is bullish. Uh, that would be the utility sector. So everything is moving higher. Doesn't matter whether it's bonds. Doesn't matter whether it's in the, in the it's a commodities. I mean, everything is moving higher. That's a beautiful thing. Inside the real estate sector, the XLRE out here. This just I uh, look at this chart. It looks like just a hodgepodge of mess out here. More so, just really a uh, consolidation-oriented pattern. Now, if price can take out the shooting star, that's the opposite of that hammer candle from back here on the trading day of uh, June 27th. Boy, then that resistance area should then become new support. But it actually looks pretty good, right? I say hodgepodge, but if we just pay attention to the bottom panel, which you'll see right now has a positive reading of 0.023, and that price today came back, tested and rejected Stevie's red line, that is a bullish signal. Now, let me see if I can just get you a clean chart out here. I don't want to. These are the types of charts that newsletter subscribers get each and every day for for different sectors. When we come back from this break, we're going to go take a hodgepodge. What? Where did the word hodgepodge actually come from? And what does it mean? I think it means hodgepodge. We're going to get rid of the hodge and the podge. And we're going to go take a look at some very clear signals for both you and I on the XL R. Steve Rogers, in quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back uh, folks so uh we were talking about hodgepodge 
uh, which is a, a British word. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks, it's always great to um, you know to have uh, wing men and wing women, and that's what we've got here at TFN. You know, we've got each other's backs out there. I try to have as much fun as I can uh, doing this show. I, I mean, it, you've got to when the majority of the time you're actually speaking to yourself. Now, I know that I've got ears out there, but it's really, you know, I'm talking to a screen. Or, but in any event, uh, so hodgepodge actually is a uh, word coming from the 15th century that is uh, hodgepodge, which was referring to mutton stew out there. And everybody loves mutton stew. I love mutton stew. I almost had some mutton last night out there, but instead I just went for the saganaki, tzatziki, and some grape leaves instead. But it was good. Hey, that's neither here nor there. You don't really care about my um, my eating habits, I don't believe. But um, if we do take a look at the XLRE, you do care about this. Now, the bottom panel here is showing us the uh, price outside, the difference between the 1939-day exponential moving average out here. It's a great tool, great indicator. And when price is at or nearing the zero level, you really like to see what is price doing in relationship to Stevie's red line, oscillator and change line out here. And when price is coming back to it, as it did earlier in the day, tests it and rejects it, it becomes a trampoline. Staying above it, closing above it, has a bearish outcome. A look at the last couple of times that we saw that same thing happen out here. Uh, just oh, you can put these tools, well, most of these tools you can put on your chart out here. May 19th, you saw the same kind of activity um, out here. And so you would expect, now, you've got that shooting star that formed from June 27th. That's its target. That's its swing point. And if it can take that out, that then would just simply be an additional bullish message. And uh, thank you for uh, clearing up the use of the word hodgepodge. Lamb, hogget, and mutton are the meat of the domestic sheep at different ages. Okay, so uh, we've got that. Now, let's uh, wait. We still have a couple of sectors, do we not? We've got one more sector. Don't we have the uh, XLB out here, building materials? If we go take a look at, um, if we go take a look at it, interesting you should ask, Danny, about the mosquitoes. First, let's finish up the XLB here. This is taken out a seventh wave move. Anytime you see a seventh wave move get taken out to the upside or the downside, it carries with it a bullish or bearish message. In this case here, a bullish message. That is exactly what occurred here inside of the building materials sector out here. Now, is this uh, is that swing point been taken out with volume? I don't know. Does it matter to me if it has slightly but that's really about it just slightly we're in the summertime you got to cut it some slack every now and then by the way the volume metric was 5.5 million shares today you're at 1.9 not likely when that uh, was taken out which was back on uh, july 17th that was about 3 million shares out here um it still can be an a to b equals cd to the upside pattern in this case here this could just simply be setting up a, a tiger butterfly uh, can't be a Gartley because uh, we're already above the all-time highs out here. So it could be, I think we are. So I think we're setting up a potential butterfly pattern. Nonetheless, it gives you a price projection of 57.24 out there. And Danny, I say it's interesting because I had a knock on the door yesterday afternoon um, after the show from a uh, neighbor's uh, landscape guy who was spraying for mosquitoes. The mosquitoes are so big down here, folks, that you have to be careful. You got to look outside. Be, be, you know, if you walk out at the wrong time, the mosquitoes can come down and, and swoop you up, pick you up, and take you away. Actually, if you just go outside for a while, and uh, you could just simply get a lot of mosquito bites. But in any event, uh, one of the uh, sprinkler boxes had a little bit of a leak and was creating a bit of a problem because mosquitoes like, uh, you know, damp water type stuff so we did get that uh, fixed yesterday how are the mosquitoes down here they are not good how are the mosquitoes up in hot Atlanta though they, they can't be much better up in Atlanta up there you guys have don't you guys have like big black flies or something like that well you, you've got some type of bugs that are just as probably bigger than our mosquitoes that swoop down pick you up and you know take you off to wherever it is that they take you off to anyways in looking at the S&P 500 sectors, no, you guys don't have anything out there. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, in looking at the S&P 500 and sector by sector, there's not anything that you and I are looking at that suggests that there is a bearish message out here that suggests prices should continue moving higher, volume or not. Now, if we go take a look at the, which we will, 
we go take a look at the ES Mini, because the futures contract is going to give us some nice ideas if there's some resistance or no resistances around where support is, old resistance, new support. You'll see nothing but green shoots here, 60-minute, 240-minute, daily, uh, weekly. Now, these green shoots, these TAS market profiles, they're not going to call a high. They're not going to be able to identify a top tick out there. They're, you just can't use them that way. But we can use uh, we can use seventh wave moves. We can use price movement higher to a less relative energy, all those types of patterns out there. But in this case here, uh, there's not anything in the way. It's free to run. There's no turbulence. If we're flying on this plane, the seatbelt light is off because it is smooth sailing ahead for how long could be for a while but i would have to say with it being wednesday at least until friday and if it's not and there's a pullback what you want to do folks is you want to buy the dip now where would the dip be inside of the es mini now, that dip could jeez at this stage here 2461 becomes the uh, dip. You're at 2467. Yeah, yeah, you give back six points. The Bears are just simply going to believe that they've got the game won. It's game over. Uh, no such thing out here. So that's what the S&P 500 sectors are communicating to you and I. That's what the ES Mini is communicating to you and I. That's probably what the equal weighted ETF is communicating to you and I. But let's not take an assumption. Let's not take my word for it. Let's just simply go take a look at the charts. This way, you and I get to say, hey, Steve's going to look at the Guggenheim S&P 500 equal weighted ETF out there. RSP is the uh, ticker symbol. Now, if we take a look at the June 13th, that used to be its all-time high. Instead, today is its all-time high, just as in the spies. Do we have divergence? The answer is no, we do not. What does that mean? That means equally weighted, the S&P 500 individual stocks are telling you that it is more than just a handful of stocks that are pulling the market up. We're talking about wonderful, beautiful, gorgeous market breadth out there. Now, what does that say about the NDX 100? Unfortunately, there used to be a, there probably is a Guggenheim NDX 100. I probably have to change it out, but I'm so used to using the QQEW. That's equal weighted ETF for the NDX 100. Now, it's all-time high. Used to be back on June 8th. Was it June 8th? That was 5505. Yeah. Uh, that were closing basis, by the way, folks. Closing basis out here. And right now, you're at 5512. If we take a look at the NDX 100, all-time high closing base was 143.57. You're at 14409. Is there divergence? The answer is no. This is not about Fang. This is not about Apple and Facebook and you know you get to da 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 da. This is about all of the NDX 108. I think it is 107, 105. But you know what I mean. That are all pulling their own weight in the way that they possibly can out here. This is beautiful. It is gorgeous. It is going to take us to much higher prices. Not like a little bit higher. Not like, nah, a little bit higher. Yeah, a little bit more than a little bit higher. We're talking about substantial, significant moves higher. Forget about years ending in seven. They're moving higher. Will interest rates continue to rise? For bold trades on U.S. Treasuries, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade TMF or TMV. Directions daily, 20 plus year, bull and bear, three times ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. I was up uh, 35, and, uh, you know, for those of you that think I was just telling you that I was fibbing and I was telling you a story, no, not about the stock market, about the mosquitoes, um, and let me show you. I, I, you know, again, I don't know where you live, but but where I live, we have signs like this that are around here. I, how many of you have a mosquito sign like this? You know, it's not like a yield sign. You can see that these mosquitoes are so big, they will pick up human beings and just simply, you know, whisk you uh, the same heck out of here. No, actually, um, I, I I don't know of a sign, a sign like this exists. Tsetse flies. But uh, in any event, I uh, did have a, a follow-up to yesterday, uh, and I, I forget, uh, somebody had written in, I, I thought I wrote it down on my pad of paper. I didn't write it down on my pad of paper. I put it down in some place where I wouldn't forget to Forget it, but I, I, when I, I didn't forget it. I just forgot who it is that requested. But I was talking about the years ending in seven and a lot of the, a lot of the hogwash stuff that's going on around the markets and stuff that are people are now. Look, I'm just going to simply give you the facts. You make your own decisions. I'll just simply what what I provided to you yesterday was um, was patterns that are present at the at every major market top. And so, and we know what to look for. So we don't have to worry about whether it's a year ending in five, six, seven, zero, one, two, three, nine, twelve, whatever it might be. We really don't have to. But I was making the point with regard to when the actual tops, and we look back at the last 120 years, and that's basically all that I have data for. Uh, and if we take a look at over the last 12 decades, that means 1897 through 2007, there's a lot of folks that are putting stuff out there that say that it's July, that right now is when the market should be making its high in referencing years ending in seven. Now, you can go do this exact same data. This is not, you can go ahead and, and search on the internet, historical Dow data. It'll, you'll see the file. It'll take you back to the 1890s out there. And you can do the same thing. And you can go grab each of the years in seven and plot them on a graph. And after you do that, you will come up with these exact same results. So in years ending in seven, where you're going to see a significant decline, does this chart suggest that it's really July? that one would be worried about? Or is it October 
that one would be looking at out here. Look, analogs are fun. Um, but what's more fun is understanding patterns that exist at every major top, whether it's in a year ending in seven or six or five or four or whenever it ends out there. And it doesn't matter whether that pattern pops up in January or February or July or October or whenever it does. That pattern, I promise you, is present at every major market top out there. What's not present at every major market top out there is an advanced decline line that's at a new all-time high. That is panel two on our screen out here. Now, don't pay much attention to my number reading. That's 409-885 out there. It is formula 409. That is telling us that that there is not a bear market that ever starts when the advanced decline line is a brand new all-time high. That's where we're at today. What we're not at today, I wish we were at today, I'll love the day when we are at that, is when we take the volume summation index, that's panel number three out here, and when that gets above the high from uh, back here on, uh, uh, looks like February 20, February 17, 20, somewhere right around there. And when we get over that, then that'll be time for you and I to do some high. Look, we never do high five. I mean, the market's going to do what it's going to do. It's up to us to take that current information, go ahead and read the signal. So just as bullish as the signals are from the market, today, tomorrow, this afternoon is a different time period. And as soon as we get those other signals, we just simply will know what to do, what action to take out there. Action Jackson. We also know that the bottom panel of our screen right now reading out at 313.47. That is a bullish message because the overall summation index here is above the zero line. The New York Stock Exchange then also meaning basically the markets for the most part respond best when this is above zero. That's why we pay attention to that line. Now what it looks like is going to occur to me and you pick this out last week you were saying to me as soon as that new york stock exchange advanced decline oscillator got above zero you were saying to me you know steve i just think that when the market gets to that oversold condition that might be the first time where we see the potential for this pullback and i think you're right i think that the advanced decline oscillator reading which would take us to the plus 150 actually i think i can go back to that other chart let me open it up let me do this here because i think i've got those lines drawn i just have to go look and see if i can just turn that on if, what if i do that will that work no that didn't work did it uh unless not that that where do i have those things drawn where do okay well it's not there it must be on this chart here then let me come back here is it there? No, it's not there. I'll be a son of a gun. But look, I'll have to figure out where that is. It's probably, oh, it's probably on another sheet that I've saved out here. But what we're watching for, see, you're at 110.51 right now. So it's got further to run. We're at new all-time highs. Advanced decline line is confirming the move. And what we're likely, what we're watching for, this is what you and I are really watching for. We're watching for the advanced decline oscillator, the difference between two exponential moving averages, 19 and 39. We're looking for this to get to plus 150. What we're really looking to see is, will this get above plus 150? Because if it does get above plus 150, it's going to be one heck of a summer. It says that July 4th was actually the beginning of the fireworks festival, that uh, there was no way in, you name it, that that was the, um, that that was the, uh, that, that that was the beginning of the fireworks festival, not the end of the fireworks festival, if in fact this gets to the reading of above plus 150. It's just the promise. You know, then sometimes promises don't come come true. But in this case here, it, it mostly does. The promise for higher prices that will be coming at us. And that means, that, you know what that means? That means we're not going to ever see another pullback. Not, not, it, now, you know I'm being facetious here. But what you want to do, if you get to plus 150, is you do want to be able to find some set of tools to be able to identify where that next pullback that you would want to buy would be. But everything here inside the New York Stock Exchange, it is very bullish. I, if, if you believe that it isn't, then, then, then please call in and share the reasons why so we can go take a look at that and identify identify that on the chart and, and and each of us can learn something new but i believe that the information i'm sharing with you is is very solid information it looks to me like that is in fact where we are headed 
for. Now, we had a couple questions that came in into them. One was to ask if we could take a look at American Express. So let's go take a look at it. AXP is the uh, ticker symbol. What do you think about American Express looking to short? Short? Hey, hey, did somebody say short? At 86, towards the 72 level out here. Well, you're at 85.48 as we speak right now. Um, let's take a look at uh, American Express on my, uh, I'm going to switch over to my other charting platform as well. Give me a moment to do that. But what we do know is American Express, Express is uh, challenging this little uh, shooting star candle from July the 5th out here. Volume there is 3.5 million, and you're moving into a 2.6 million on a light volume-ish kind of time period. You're really moving into that swing point with volume on American Express. Nonetheless, let's come back. Let's take a look at it on my other set of charts out here because maybe there is some other type of topping pattern. And we don't want to overlook that potentiality to it. With regard to pulling back to 72 or 74, wow, wow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. So we were taking a look at American Express, ticker symbol AXP. This is the uh, daily chart that we're taking a look at out here. And there, there's no question we talked about this little shooting star on July 5th. And, and the top of that, 85, 85, 85, 88 is resistance. Now, today you're testing that.
with a volume of 2.6 million shares versus 3.5. So it seems to me like you're pushing into a swing point with volume. I don't know what the end of day volume is going to be. But at this stage here at 154, it's telling us you're pushing highs with volume. It says that you're going to go back and test that area. So if you're going to do this on a swing point uh, volume uh, test and rejection, you need to see lighter volume than what we're seeing here today. Do I see that as a reason to short this? It's a reason. I don't know that it's the reason that I would go ahead and, and take a look at out here, but it is. You, it would be better off if this were going to be a short. I can, I can, I can share with you what you would see. You would certainly see it close back inside the daily market profile. That's below eighty four seventy one. Uh, that's a dollar worth waiting for before you would go jump on the short. You're thinking seventy two or so. You know, there's a hammer at seventy six bucks. Maybe you know comes all the way back to that swing point, but this has not even broken a swing point whether that is the uh, trading i'd use the july 11th uh, level to be watching for so that's what i see in american express on the daily on the weekly chart out here the weekly chart had volume of 11 million you're at 7.6 it's only it's only wednesday you are actually or not you but american express is pushing into a weekly all-time swing point high i believe it's all time uh no it's not it's pushing into a swing point with volume um, and that's not even a bearish reversal candle on a weekly base out here. It looks to me like American Express wants to go higher, not go lower. Now, the other question that came in was, um, what's it? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what say you, NDX over 59.10? What's the next target? A couple different ways for us to take a look at what that next target would be. One easy way for you to take a look at it is, and we're at 59.18. We'll just put this on. Oh, this is already on a weekly chart. Uh, is to take a look at its expansion of swing points out here. And what I mean by expansion of swing points, I think maybe I'll just put this to a monthly chart. That might be easier for you to see. I'm referring to the swing points from 2000 or 1999. No, March 2000, uh, from that high down to low in uh, 2002. And the number 5907 is the 1 to 1 1.272 expansion. So if you're above 5907, you're at 5917, says the next target is 7297. That would be one target. Another target that you could use is the uh, Gartley buy pattern inside of the NQ that says the NQ is headed to the 6112. Oh, well, that's just the one to one level. We are now above the 100% move and move. We're now into outcome number five, the A to B equals CD pattern. So you can use that as a target. We could also take a look at the horizontal trading ranges inside of the NDX 100. The monthly says you're headed to 6300. You're only at 5918 right now. The weekly and this is where we're in. It says you're headed to 61.52. And the daily says, um, wake me up when we get to 59.64. At 59.64, that should be the next area, a little bump in the road out here, 59.64. If we see it close above 59.64, that's the daily horizontal trading range. Then it'll say, wake me up when we get to 61.53. So that says 61.53. The NASDAQ weekly says 61.52. 63.11 on the NDX 100. And if we get to 63.11, this is only July. If we get to 63.11 by the end of August, September, folks, um, you talk about a move. There's going to be a move that uh, you probably haven't seen before. And it's going to go well above Stevie's red lines out here, these horizontal lines. But we'll take things one day at a time. Speaking of one day at a time, stay tuned. David White is up next after that. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.